Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are going to be talking about a zombie of sorts. Today we are talking about Silo, and this is one of those things that I was so in love with this program back in the day, and then it sort of was abandoned, which was such a shame, because at the time, I'll be honest, I wasn't a huge fan of the way 3D modeling worked in Blender, and most of the other applications out there cost quite a bit of money. So this was an affordable 3D modeling tool with intuitive and straightforward modeling features, and then the developers just sort of abandoned it. They went to work on mobile applications and such, and now, amazingly enough, uh, I, I guess about a, a year and a bit back, they started selling it again on Steam, and now they just released Silo 2021. And that is what you see in front of you. This is a, well, this is a Gundam, I grabbed it off Sketchfab, that is not my work by the way. Uh, but this is a uh, low polygon subdivision 3D modeling tool, and that's mostly all it is. It's a modeling and texturing UVing tool for the most part. Uh, plus you can now set blend shapes. It's one of the new features of uh, Silo 2021. Along with Silo 2021, they also now have a companion app called Milo. And if I'm honest, I don't really get the purpose of Milo. It's a visualization app, uh, so it enables you to see your models in 3D. Uh, where it is kind of cool is if you had a game level or something, you can actually navigate through it in virtual reality. You also have the ability to render or even create uh, 360 uh, GIFs, a GIF animations of like a rotation of your 3D model. Uh, but otherwise, that's pretty much what this one is all about. You've got the ability to set uh, you know, the kind of room you're in, uh, and the effect on the scene. Uh, you've got the ability to set the lighting setup, the lighting positions, uh, lighting colors, and so on. And that's pretty much the idea behind Milo. I Honestly, I, I'm not sure I 100% get the purpose of this. One of the interesting things is though, this is actually being powered by Unreal Engine. So what you're seeing is what you would get if you used Unreal Engine. So if you were using uh, Never Center Silo for Unreal Engine development, you could also use it as a bit of a previs step. Uh, but it'd be interesting to see what features they add to that uh, in the long run. So we're back here now to Never Center Silo. Uh, you can zoom in between multiple viewports. Uh, there are a number of different um, editor options you can expand and, and show. So things like the scene editor, uh, they can all be shut down. So you have just uh, the, the thing you want to work with. We'll keep the brush editor out right now because I'll show you that. Most of their tools are over here. One thing that drives me nuts for Silo, and if someone from Never Center is listening, you really got to change this. Uh, there's no tool tip explanation. So at the very least, I would love to see if it would actually explain what something was and what the equivalent hotkey to use it is. Almost everything here has a hotkey. Uh, they just don't necessarily tell you what they are. So we've got uh, surface tools like so, so you can do quick and dirty uh, modeling or or improvements to things. You switch between polygon, vertex mode, and so on. Uh, you've also got the ability to apply smooth to something. Uh, it's gonna take a little bit of while. Uh, you've got your typical extrusion bevels. Uh, you can create new polygons. You want to start from a new scene, so. All right, so you start here. Let's go ahead, we can create. You start from, often what you're gonna do is start from something like a cube. Interestingly enough, it is keeping the material from the previous project. I don't know why it's doing that. That strikes me as probably behavior that you don't want. So you can see we've got our old material right here. Uh, and I don't, I don't know what to do about that. I don't know uh, how, how I should handle this. It, it shouldn't be using an old material in a new project. So uh, that is definitely something that needs to be resolved. I also don't have the ability to get rid of materials, which I find a little bit weird. So there's definitely some bugginess or glitchiness going on here as well. Uh, but back to the standard polygon uh, modeling. So you see here, you've got, you work with your faces, vertices, and so on. You've got your standard manipulation tools. You use the QWERTY keys to switch between uh, scale, rotate, and so on. Uh, you've got your standard tools over here. So for example, we can do an extrusion out and then we just grab it on the point that we want to extrude and then enter to apply and you can keep going again this is one of those areas where if they had the hover hotkey it would make life a whole lot easier uh, at the same time we can also do multiple select so I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna grab uh, multiple edges and we can do a bevel at this point and we'll use the control point there so we can bevel it in like so. It's really hard to see with that particular material applied. So that that is annoying and hopefully that gets fixed. And then we've also got uh, your typical loop tools. Um, you can also paint out displacement. This isn't going to do much because I don't have, um, I don't have uh, a lot of polygons to work with. We also have your basic straight out kind of paint and 
sculpt kind of with the polygonal modeling tools available here with the surface tool. Uh, and then otherwise you got the tools that you would expect here. We also have the ability to work with like raw polygons. So for example, I could switch over here. I can grab that guy right there. So let's do Q mode, grab that vertex right there. We'll do an append polygon and we can start there. And then you can start actually creating polygons by hand if you so wish. So let's do it again. So a pen polygon, we'll grab, so just put one here, grab that one, grab that one, grab that one, I'm done. So you can start building your models uh, polygon by polygon if you so wish. Just, again, as a straightforward low poly modeling tool, it is a nice option. And again, hit spacebar, and we can bring up the 3D and the UV views. You have a number of different options for UV unwrapping. So here I'll go into object mode, select Object mode, all right, escape with current tool. Object mode, so you see down here, there are my current UV layouts. I've got uh, options here, so I can do per face, cylindrical planner, so I can just basically spit them out like that. Or I can have it do its smart version using LSCM, and it's going to do its best unwrap, at least it should. Let's try it that way. I don't know why it's not working. So I think we're also going to have a bit of a learning curve with the software, which I have not gone through myself. So anyways, this is Never Center. At the time when it was ascendant, like we're talking 10-ish years ago, I was actually thinking about using this when I first launched Game From Scratch. This was like an unbeatable tool. But the thing is, since then, Blender got B-Mesh and it got a whole lot better. So what niche is this going to carve out? Well, in terms of price point, it is sort of unique in that area. It's 150 bucks. There's not a lot of apps in that space. So you're looking at a dedicated modeler. You've got things like ZBrush, which is a sculpting tool, or um, Moto, which is about a thousand bucks. And I think ZBrush is around $800 right now. Uh, so it's substantially cheaper than those guys. It's more along the lines of say Cheetah, uh, which is a 3D only program for the Mac. Um, where, yeah, it makes sense, but the problem is Blender got so much better. The one thing Silo has going for it is it's more streamlined, so it's probably a bit easier to pick up. Uh, once you get the tooling down, it is pretty nice. Uh, I'm also finding some things a little bit on the buggy side, personally, too. Uh, some of the new things that they added here are variable edge creasing and blend shapes for animation and modeling. Uh, they've also got Milo now, again, the uh, Unreal powered rendering walkthrough and VR tool. Um, I don't see a whole lot of use for Milo as of yet, but it'd be interesting to see what they add there. Uh, in terms of features, they've got a complete polygon and subdivision tool set, arch visualization, intuitive UV workflows, instant turntable renders. I believe that is from, yeah, that's a Milo feature. So they're mixing their, their two programs together in the feature list here. Uh, you support for Unreal and Unity via FBX, including with blend shape support, uh, pre-made lighting rigs, that's again, Milo. Uh, model with blend shapes, Silo, Milo, Link, virtual reality support, fully customizable, so you can change all the colors, the hotkeys, interface buttons, mouse functions, and so on. Uh, perfect ZBrush companion, it has GeoZ support, uh, Silo is ideal for modeling base meshes for ZBrush, and transport product design. Um, so yeah, that is it. Oh, by the way, they also make Pixel Mash, a tool I spoke of in the past. So uh, they've got some tutorials. If you want to get up and running with Silo, uh, you can actually um, download a seven-day trial available for uh, Windows and Mac in the seven-day trial. If you're curious in terms of what programs it supports, uh, we can load into scene the filing for file formats. So their own plus OBJ, FBX, DAE, DXF, 3DS, FAC, STL, and um, GeoZ or uh, ZBrush formats. And in terms of exporting out, you've got uh, pretty much the exact same list plus RIB, STL, and POV files. Um, or Pavre. And that is it. That is uh, Never Center Silo 2021. It, it you know what, again, this could have been a contender if they didn't continuous development and they fixed their bugs and they streamlined it and they proved instead of, you know, dropping development for 10 years to work on mobile applications and then picking things back up. Now, I do wish Silo the best. I, I do think that a really streamlined, effective, low polygon modeler that slots into workflows is a great idea that they now have to compete with a blender that is free and has gotten so much better than back 10 years ago. Uh, so it'd be interesting to see where they go. I, I'd be interested to hear what you think of Never Center Silo and what you think of Milo if you see a purpose for it. And yeah, that's it. What do you think? Talk to you all later. Goodbye.